Well, as doctors and nurses continue to struggle with the number of patients they are treating, new research shows the toll taken on their own health. The study by King's College London suggests almost half of those who have worked in intensive care during the first wave may be suffering from severe anxiety or trauma. Well, Dr. Mame Benko is a junior doctor in London. It isn't just the hospitals under strain, but unsurprisingly, paramedics are as well. Police officers have or to ease the pressure on hospitals. A hotel chain has offered to take patients who are recovering from coronavirus. The first patients have been discharged to the Best Western in Croydon. Carolyn Sim is there for us uh, this evening. So Carolyn, how will this work exactly? Well, to reduce the spread of the virus, the mayor is adamant face masks should be compulsory and places of worship closed. Along with London's councils, he's written to the Prime Minister asking for restrictions to be tightened. Boris Johnson told MPs the current rules are starting to show signs of some effect. Martin Stew reports. We heard from them at the top of the programme. Simon is back here now. So Simon, the Mayor wants tougher restrictions, but are there signs that the current measures are doing something and working? Well, let's be honest, there are some, very, are some glimmers of hope. The number of patients being admitted into London hospitals has dropped. described it to me today as plateauing. Still to come, Sally is here with the weather. Will we have snow by the weekend? Plus, it's a month. But first, the family of a man from Hertfordshire who died after choking on a marshmallow at the care home where he was living said care homes must take more responsibility. It's after the coroner ruled his death was avoidable. Patrick Casey had lived in the home since 2014. He had swallowing problems after a car crash almost 10 years earlier. The apology from the Priory, which ran the home, has not been accepted by his family. Some holder reports. And to some other news now, the man responsible for the Parsons Green tube bombing has been charged with assaulting a prison officer at Belmarsh. The ITV News continues with the national and international stories at 6.30. Here's Mary. Well, next from us, the phrase tidy house, tidy mind is one we are all too familiar with. But how many of us are using lockdown as a time to get rid of our unwanted stuff? Well, if you are in need of some motivation, decluttering guru Dilly Carter might be able to help. Sally is here with the weather. Have you picked up any tips there? I Do want her to be my friend <laughs> her in my life. She's going to be a very busy lady, isn't she? Uh, very, very. Anyway, weather. The snow oh. maybe on Saturday. It's quite, uh, as I said, it's quite uncertain. We're keeping, I'm sure if you like this. I'm oh, interested no. to know. This photo was taken by Ruth. I love it. I love it. It's great, isn't it? We end tonight with that sobering reminder of the toll the virus has taken on this city. More than 10,000 Londoners have now died with COVID, something a year ago would have been unimaginable. Each life lost represents an individual with their own story and more often than not a family they have left behind. They are grandparents, mothers, fathers, children, partners, colleagues and friends. This pandemic is far from over. There will sadly be many more deaths in the days, weeks and months ahead. But we felt it was important to pause and remember. Good night.